Hey guys, welcome to this video. I hope you're doing great. Um, today is about one dimensional elements as one of you suggested to do a video about that. I'm doing it right now. So let's get right into it. I have a problem with an Excel defined here. So it's a cantilever beam as usual. So we have uh, some geometric properties like the dimensions L, B, H. So it's length, width and height of the beam. Then we have force applied to it with a Young's module. And now the cross-section inertia is created and uh, calculated and the deflection and the stress, maximum stress located at this position is the sort of reference for the problem setup I'm doing right now in Hypermesh. So stick with me for a minute. I'm uh, leading you through the uh, process of creating that in Hypermesh. And if there's questions, uh, please feel free to comment on this video and I may be doing a more theoretic introduction into cantilever beams or maybe suggest a other video which already does that. All right, um, Hypermesh set up right here. Um, first things first, we have to define a geometry and before that even create a component. So I'm creating a component and this is my cantilever beam. And I'm doing this rather, um, yeah, fast paced more or less um, so it's not it's not in this case that you will have a perfect time if you're doing that step by step with my speed I guess so if you want to do that hit pause after every step because that's some frustrating experience if you want to do it right now it's just for you to lean back and enjoy how I'm doing the work here <laughs> not just just it's it's more or less a showing how to video and it's not a real tutorial all right so i have a component right here and i'm creating notes here so first note is zero 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 second note is 250 zero zero so that little trick i did with uh, control and the middle mouse button or pressing f so that you have the feel of you centered on your model. So you have your two nodes and that's about it for the geometry, simple task. Now you want to create a property for your later elements. And for that, you also create a material. So first thing, material. Create a material um, with the parameters from the Excel file. In this case, I think it's aluminum. And this is 69,000 and it's it's not necessary in here for our reference it was not in any equation so i set it to zero hopefully that works now i'm creating property and the property there are different property card images which are used for creating one dimensional elements those are p beam p bar and p rod so those are the mainly the, the three P beam or P bar are used more or less the same. It's with a asymmetrical, more general cross section, which also can change with the length of the beam. P rod symmetrical cross section cannot change, cannot offset, and is also just used for axial load, not any bending stuff. So we are using P bar in this case. If you want to check that, you can check it on the help. Just click your uh, Hyperworks help home. And then you can just p bar p beam. You would you should you should come to a page like this, and now here are the keywords, and then you can look the definition up for yourself. Right. So p bar and material we have that already, and now the cross section. It's a beam section, and that's important. So that's why I'm pausing here for a minute. You could just input your cross-section data so in this case for example we have our cross-section calculated here uh, cross-section the cross-section inertia is calculated here we could input that right into our um, yeah our property but we can also use hypermesh to calculate it automatically and for this i'm using the hyperbeam view and that's the button here so if you click here you're transferred into a different setting so watch it. This is the other setting in this case. Just right-clicking here, create standard section obstruct bar. 
you have different cross sections to choose from. In this case, it's just bar. The parameters in this case are 25 and 0 0.8. So it's a rather thin beam. And note that it makes a difference later on in um, how you orient in this beam cross section like this. It makes an, a difference if you have a load applied here, if the cross section is like this or like this or something in between. So later on, I will define an orientation which maps the vector y in here to a random or a individual vector chosen by myself. So this is the y vector. Okay, going back with this button named model view, um, I can now see that I created a cross section here and I can assign this cross section to this property by just pressing beam section twice and choosing the rectangular section hitting okay and now you can see that all the values are in here now that's that now we can assign the property to the component and now we can create the elements um, the elements are created on the 1d radio button with bars there's no beams beams or bars are just created with bars in this case and now here's important thing that you just don't click in here and select node a b before setting it all up so the first thing is to choose the property hitting property selecting property one and the element type c bar is okay in this case <clears throat> the second thing you want to do is the orientation i talked about earlier uh, in this case it's uh, defined with components which is okay but you could also use it with vectors in this case you could choose the y-axis for example now it's all set just remember property element type and orientation those have to be done literally done before selecting the nodes because you're selecting node a and now you see that uh, the highlighter jumped to node b you're selecting node b and there's no create button the element is created automatic automatically with the selection of node b now how can you check that the orientation worked you have a, um, a visualization tool in here which is called 1d detailed element representation hitting that will just give you a hint how this model looks like and in this case yeah it's the y-axis which is corresponding to the y-axis here Okay, so going back to normal element representation, we can now um, do our load case, our load step. So in this case, we want to fix here and we want to apply a load here. Um, so analysis is the radio button we want to be in. And now we're creating a constraint, second column, second row, and the first node on the left, all fixed, create. And you see that a load collector automatically create, uh, is created here. Just rename that to SPC and maybe a different color. Create another one, for example, force. Going back to return, now force panel is just two below the constraint panel. And here I can select the node and select, oh, it's everything set already. So minus, minus 0 0.5, y-axis, load type force, perfect. Hitting create and the color also matches. Perfect. Well, it works. <laughs> so you have a force, you have a SPC, and now the only thing missing is a load step. So if analyzes, you have a load step right here. And in this case, you just give a name, for example, load step one, SPC must be SPC, load must be force. And here you have linear static, which is okay in this case. And just hitting create. And that's about it. So for this to run, we go on analysis, optistruct, save as, now we choose some, where did I put it? I think here, here, here. And run it with the optistruct. Don't worry about those commands. This is um, rather not necessary in this case because it's a really small model. And now you can see the displacement. Wow, perfect. 35.38, 35.38. What can you tell? So that's that's good already. 
and um, just with one single element. But, 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 um, stresses, stresses. Oh, I forgot something. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, with stresses, there's a, a problem in this case. Stresses are, yeah, you have a one-dimensional element. And I best can show you that best on the hypermesh help with p-bar. Mm -mm -mm. p-bar, 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 here. Well, it's not that good in here, maybe. So, here. You have your cross-section. And per default, the stresses are evaluated at the middle. Middle, neutral axis, no stresses. So for this to work correctly, you have to define points where you want to have the, um, where you want to have your uh, stresses evaluated. In this case, we would have to go 0.4 millimeter upwards or downwards in order to get the maximum stress, which is happening in here. So in this case, we would have to define a 0.4 value at here. Because right now, oh, I'm sorry, right now the stresses would be zero. So I'm running that just once again and show you what I did. Um, with property I set the continuation line 1 with C1 to 0 0.4. Um, you have stress recovery coefficients, uh, default is 0, 0.0, and this is the neutral axis. And you can read about those points, points or how they are deficient, uh, how they are defined in here. So with the, with the card P bar. So this should give me now with the hyperview should give me maybe some element stress results, even if it's just one element. But we'll see about that. Now in Hyperview, you have the problem that all 1D elements are not displayed with their correct cross-sections. Even they have no cross-sections at all, and that's very frustrating to see. Um, therefore, you can choose preferences, options, and visualization, and then you have bar elements, and you can can say cylinder. And now you're getting a little bit more info here because I could choose. I could show you how it looks normally. It's like this, and yeah. So I like it more if you have a cylinder, so I can see it a little bit better, and. Now you can also see the deformation, so that looks fine. It's just a straight deformation because we only have one, two nodes. So the one is fixed and the other moves. You can also see that by the vector plot. So you see that, let me just hold that for a minute. Yeah, those is just one displacement. So about the stresses, now I'm curious. Uh, the axial stress is zero and SB max which would be which would be the, the node here. Um, yeah, zero. But I'm 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 hopefully hopefully C1 is not related to uh, the to the node A because that would be and B there's nothing about it here but Saw that in the P beam view, I guess, but there's it's a little bit different. It's N one B and N one N one B. Because I was wondering about that. Um, if you have just with one element, ah, two could be. Ah, it could be. So C is this is a random a random literal, but two means the the second node. Mm, and I guess this should come up with a stress. I'm not perfectly sure it's, if it's the right stress because we just have one um, strain value. But yeah, it shouldn't be zero because the element is clearly deformed. And now let me just quickly check that. So SB max, nothing. 
PC. Ah, a little bit. It's AC. Ah, there it is. So A corresponds to the node B, whatever. Ah, no, sure. Because one node deforms, right? This one deforms. But it's creating a displacement, which is creating a moment here, and then here you would have the maximum stress value. Makes sense. S A max should be, in this case, 46.8. And what's that in related to the analysis value? 46.88. Seems legit. So in this case, you have your displacement and your stress values. Um, but if you want to have your values more over um, the, the length of the beam, so with more values, you can do that with a second method of creating one dimensional elements. And this is the only thing I want to show you right now. Um, additionally to, to, the bar, um, to the bar creation we did with this one. You can also do the same thing with more elements with the line mesh element or the line mesh method. So just quickly deleting the C bar element created earlier and replacing it with a line mesh. So line mesh has um, different options. So property is also the same thing. Select the property first and also select the uh, orientation. In this case, you want to define a base node. And now you can choose it, for example, with a node list and a element size, for example, 15, and create several elements. For example, in this case, 17. And you could also do that with a line. So if you have a geometric line, for example, from a cat file, you would choose line and then line mesh. And so in this way, you can easily create multiple uh, one dimensional elements at once. All right, now this is set. I can just quickly run that again, maybe with a different. And I would suggest that you try and try with different element lengths and different element counts, just to get a feel for it, how your um, values change. Uh, so this is the last one, line mesh. But I'm thrilled that the stress value is actually correct. Okay, um, now you can see with, uh, at best you can see it with the vector plot. So you have different, um, different values for all the nodes. In this case, maybe the other visualization is even better. And you can see it also in the deformation here. It tends to be a more like a parabolic shape and not so much a straight line. And now I'm curious about the stresses. And in this case, it's C, the C. And you see how the stress is increasing in this direction. Yeah. All right, that's about it for this video, I guess. Um, if I want, if you want to do more about topology um, optimization, for example, that's also possible. Um, just a quick hint in topology, you could also choose a P rod, weld shell bar, bar L element to do a topology optimization. If you exam for example, you have, a, you have a whole net of different bars and uh, stuff like that. And you want to really get to know which of the bar elements are important and which structures you can leave away. So that's also a very interesting topic, but I've, I'm afraid it's more than we have time for it right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like. If you haven't, please leave a dislike and suggest me in the comments if what, what, what I could I make uh, better in this case. Hope you have a good time and um, yeah, see you soon.